everyone. Today we are at my house for a change and I have invited over Claudia Astorino who is an intersex activist and is gonna come over and not only talk about intersex activism and her experience as an intersex person, but we're also going to play Scrabble, which is one of our favorite games. So I'm going to go get the door. Hi, Hi. how are Hello. you? Hi, my name's Claudia. I am an intersex person and I'm gay. Pick a tile first. This is how awesome. we see who starts the game. In my family, we never actually keep score. The point is just to like get rid of all the tiles, but like there's no counting up numbers. And, so like, the point is to have a blast. Yeah. Tell me about your family. Pretty stereotypical Italian American family. It was just very like wholesome, like typical suburban kid upbringing. Right. From the time I was eight, I knew that I was born without a uterus. It wasn't until later that I learned also that I am intersex. In college, my roommate would leave and I would like immediately get on my giant clunky desktop and be like searching for intersex. And I'm like, I don't understand what this means. And uh, growing up in a small suburban environment, I certainly didn't know that gender was a thing, like a category at all. We're people who are born with uh, a combination of characteristics. Uh, that are traditionally thought of as male or female. For example, I have breasts and a vagina, and I also have XY chromosomes, and I was born with testes. I want to hear about your family and your family's dialogue yeah. with you and how they have felt through this whole process. I had gotten a hernia, as kids often do, and when they went to fix the hernia, the doctor said, you know, your kids' gonads don't really look like their ovaries, they look like their testes. Shortly after my first birthday, uh, they removed the testes that I was born with. I still don't exactly know how much my parents really knew or understood mm -hmm. at that point. You know, you, you trust doctors. Like, you know, doctors say, yeah. do this thing. And you're like, okay, well, the doctor says this is best for my child. Absolutely. It's a pretty hard thing when you realize, whoa, maybe what I was told wasn't the thing. Yeah. When I first heard the word intersex, I really didn't know what that meant. Like a lot of people who are told that they're intersex by doctors, it was a lot of information all at once. A lot of the surgeries or other procedures that are performed are sort of just to make sure that our bodies look like quote unquote normal boy and girl bodies. There's all kinds of expectations we have about what male and female bodies look like. Mm -hmm. Once I sort of understood that, it was like, oh, I didn't know that these procedures weren't actually for health reasons. They were just sort of checking that I would be able to have quote unquote normal sex with a man one day. There are people out there who are really comfortable with their bodies. And even people like I was starting to figure out that I was that didn't feel like they had to shoehorn themselves into a male or a female box that they can identify as intersex. How about deep? Nice one. It's good. It's good. Let's talk about the queer community and okay. let's talk about being queer and being intersex. Yeah. How do you see those two things overlapping? I think we're having a lot of the same conversations about intersex um, that we had been having about trans individuals before where people were saying, this isn't about sexual orientation, this is about gender identity, so does it make sense to include them? Mm -hmm. And I think people are having the same conversations now about adding the I right. and saying, well, intersex is about bodies, it's not specifically about sexual orientation and gender, so should we include the I? The doctor's decision to say, hey, get rid of this body part is based on the same exact sort of conversation that uh, gives people opposition to transgender people wanting to have, you know, take hormones or, or socially transition. It's all sort of the same core conversation around gender and people expecting that gender is one of two things and that sex is one of two things. I think what the LGBT movement has been fighting for for a long time is to say, regardless of my body, regardless of my identity, we should be respected and we should be treated like people. Um, and have rights that other people get to have. I know what it's like for me to come out as queer um, in, yeah. it, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, but certainly not within a relationship, right? Like I've never had to say to somebody, hey, by the way, I'm queer when I'm like trying to date them. What is it like to come out as intersex? A lot, a lot of people know what it means to be gay, but we're at a time in history where people really don't understand what intersex is. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, people asking a lot of questions like, so does that, do you have, 
um, is that like a her, uh, like people just don't know. I feel like that was a spot on impression of like a response. I've unfortunately had a lot of practice. Yeah. Duty. Yes. Good job. <laughs> So talk to me about how you got started as an intersex activist. When I was in my early mid-20s, I was like, you know, I think I'm at a point where I think I want to start talking about this. And I got started by cold emailing. Do people even say that? But cold email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cold calling, cold sure. emailing. Sure, cold emailing various intersex people and said, I would like to organize an event and call it Intersex Awareness Day. I'm some chumpy kid that doesn't know what they're doing, but if you'd come, that'd be great. Yeah, so this will be the sixth one. It's a great opportunity to raise awareness that we exist, that we should be able to have the bodies that we're born with like everybody else without it being altered. We didn't get to consent to that. It's so great. I mean, it's like so many other pieces of, I think, the queer community where the more that we have conversations about it, the more people understand what the terminology means, the variance within the terminology, yeah. and just like seeing human beings who are talking about their personal experiences you learn more, you understand more, and you know things hopefully will get easier, whether it be in like a medical context or just in like an everyday context. Absolutely. My goals as an intersex activist, to raise awareness that intersex people exist, to educate people about what the word intersex means. I'm also hoping there will be policies that say it's not okay to perform these kinds of medical procedures on kids who can't say that they're okay having them or not, um, especially when they're not for a health benefit. That's what I hope for the future. Claudia, thank you for being here at my thank house. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. This was wonderful. This was a great non-competitive game of Scrabble. Yes. To everybody at home, you should check the links below so that you can read the awesome stuff that Claudia has written and continues to write. Thank you all for watching and of course subscribe. Um, Trey, do you have anything to say? Cool. Well, everybody have a Typical. good week. <laughs>